This is the story of John Brody, one of my ancestors, who was a soldier for the Empire. I wonder what lessons from history we can learn. John Brody was age 21 when he enlisted in the 4th Light Dragoons in Dublin, Ireland. He was originally from Westmeath, Ireland. And on the 26th of May, 1823, he enlisted in the 4th Light Dragoons. He had just got married shortly beforehand. He and his wife were stationed in India. And originally they were stationed in a place called Kara, which is uh, north of Bombay. And over a period of four years, over 400 troops of the regiment died of cholera and fever. So uh, they transferred the regiment to a place called Kirki, which was uh, just uh, south of Bombay. And there the uh, conditions were a lot better. Um, originally they had to spend six months in tents. Um, until permanent barracks were built, but the death rate dropped to about 30 men a year, which, believe it or not, was deemed an acceptable loss rate. He participated in the First Afghan War. Um, he uh, left base with uh, two troops uh, in December 1838, and uh, they were the 4th Light Dragoons, but through most of the uh, documents, they're called the 4th Hazars um, because they provided two troops um, to this invading force. On uh, March 1839, they cross into Afghanistan at Quetta. <clears throat> the major battle that took place was the uh, Battle of Ghani, or Guni, I'm probably butchering both of those. It occurred on the 23rd of July 1839. Um, the Fourth uh, Hazars or Light Dragoons acted as a screening force along with the Lancers to protect the rear of the uh, units that were active in storming the fortress. Um, so they uh, probably got a good view of the battle going on, but um, didn't have to uh, um, actively uh, participate in the uh, storming of the, uh, the fortress. Um, the battle was actually famous for the role of the sappers uh, who blew the gates and um, that was uh, both Indian and British sappers. Uh, in fact, most of the invading force was uh, uh, Indian, native Indians. Um, the British losses were about 200 killed and wounded and the Afghans lost uh, 500 killed and 1,600 captured. And... Um, after that battle, they installed their own puppet uh, ruler in Afghanistan. Hmm, that hasn't happened recently in Afghanistan, has it? Um, uh, but uh, things didn't go quite well for them, although um, this battle was a victory. Uh, later on, one of the columns uh, got slaughtered, and that's quite a famous thing in its own right, but I won't go into that in more detail here. Basically, they... <laughs> <coughs> they went into Afghanistan um, to uh, stop Russian ambitions on the area. Um, they, uh, anyhow, John survived that campaign and uh, returned to India. The two squadrons of the regiment had uh, been away for 18 months. And during that time they lost uh, three officers and 58 rank and file, all to fever and cholera and none to enemy action. Um, that's a picture of their uh, uh, base camp. Um, as you can see, it's pretty basic, just um, wooden structures with uh, the old corrugated iron on. Um, but that was deemed as uh, okay in those days. And uh, no trees around or anything. I suppose if you have a military encampment, you want... Um, all the area around it clear to see if any enemy were incoming. Um, in 1841, the Fourth Dragoons uh, ended their tour of duty in India, and the Fourteenth Dragoons uh, took over. And 150 men transferred to Ju to the Fourteenth, and John and his son are amongst them. So uh, John Brady obviously uh, was. Uh, enjoying his time in India and decided to stay there. Um, 
on the 5th of November 1844, he uh, received a medical discharge, the surgeon saying this man is recommended for discharge on account of age and length of service in a tropical climate. His family life in India uh, resulted in the birth of three children. Um, Mary Ann, born uh, 1824, Patrick, born 1829, and Margaret, born in 1834, and all of them were born in India. Uh, his son Patrick enlisted in the 4th uh, Light Dragoons, and uh, he's recorded as receiving the India, Indian Mutiny Medal, but I don't have any more information on him. Uh, Mary Ann married a Corporal James McIntyre, or in India, and uh, their other daughter Margaret married a Patrick Gillilay in um, or Gillilay, Gillilay in Auckland, New Zealand. In 1848, on the 24th of January, he arrived in New Zealand aboard the Clifton as a fencible settler, and uh, he came with his wife and daughter Margaret. And originally they resided in the fenceable village of Pamua, first in Ralph Hearts. In fact, this is a picture from the uh, Howick uh, Historical Village, and it's a uh, reconstruction of John and Mary's Ralph Hearts. So, John Brodie became a pioneer of Auckland, New Zealand, and uh, arrived when the town was only eight years old. The Fencibles uh, were a defence force, like a local militia. They had a parade every Sunday, and they also gave uh, some service in the um, autumn um, training, and they had to be able to provide armed defence against the fierce local Maoris. Um, they were armed with brown best muskets, and in return for seven years of service, they were to receive a, a cottage and an acre of land, like most deals with the government, they were stiffed. They got basically half a cottage and half an acre of land. Um, however, they still did get uh, a pay over and above their normal pensions. Uh, Brody Terrace in Mount Wellington is named after John Brody. Uh, and on the 17th of March, 1874, he died at 72 years of age in Pamela, Auckland. So this is my tribute to John Brody. Interesting side note is that uh, the 4th Hussars fought throughout Wellington's Peninsula Campaign and uh, along with the 8th Hussars they participated in the charge of the Light Brigade at Balaclava in 1854. Um, so probably good, it was good, <laughs> good that uh, John was no longer a member of the regiment seeing that a vast majority of them got slaughtered in that battle. And uh, Winston Churchill was a, a later member of the regiment. Um, the 4th Hussars were later um, amalgamated into other units. And uh, that's my um, short tribute to uh, John Brodie. Hope you enjoyed it. Um,